Hi wrestling fans, I'm Percival A. Friend and I was known as the epitome of professional wrestling managers. I got my start here in the Detroit area but I carried that that great, great stamina to a lot of points and places in the world. I'm very happy today and honored to be a part of this great documentary about professional wrestling, about wrestling over the past 50 years. And I am really, really proud and honored. And I know that you're going to enjoy this program. It's very, very great. And thank you right from the bottom of my heart. I'm Ron Martinelli. I've been a professional wrestler. I end up learning my trade actually from Louis Klein. I went to Louis' gym, he taught me. And uh, it was a big part of it. Louis gave me my name of Ron Martinelli. Because I, my real name was Ron Zuccaro, but he said, you're a fine Italian boy. He grabbed a telephone book he opened it up and he said, from now on, you're going to be known as Ron Martinelli. So that's how I got the book, the name of Ronnie Martinelli. I uh, also had Continental Wrestling. I promoted that along with Louis Martinez. And we had our programs all over. I loved wrestling. It was a great time in my life. I got to meet a lot of people, wrestle a lot of people, Andre the Giant. Luthez, uh, Killer Kowalski, uh, Haystacks Calhoun, all 618 pounds of them. It was wonderful. I met a lot of wonderful people and a lot of wonderful fans. And I'd also like to thank any of the fans that are watching this. I'd love to thank you for coming out and watching us while we performed. It was wonderful. You made my day and I really appreciate it. I'm Rob J. Bauer. Uh, I've been in the, around the wrestling quite a while and I've been so honored to be here and just to be able to give a few, uh, give a few memories and share a few memories with these gentlemen here for this his, historic uh, uh, program, I'm gonna call it a historic program of the uh, wrestling in Detroit and Michigan in the 50s and 60s and just being a part of it, uh, seeing some of these faces again and the guys involved in it, it's, got to, it's going to be very educational, not only to the fans who saw it and shared it themselves, but to today's fans too, who are going to have to use this documentation as their only guide to what they actually miss through no fault of their own. There was some great activity in those days we can never see it again. We can't duplicate what is gone. We can just remember it and try to share it in some kind of a program like this. I don't know if there'll ever be another program like this with the people that are involved in it and the people who had what it takes to put this together, to take the time and the ambition to actually keep something like memories like this going and to actually provide us with something that we can share with others. Thank you everybody involved who's doing this because I know it's going to be years and years of enjoyment and just to be a part of it is more than an honor and I thank you all. If there any, is anyone out there that is a wrestling fan of the uh, of Michigan, uh, any Michigan promotions or if you just want to learn anything about it I would recommend that you see this documentary. Uh, I believe it's going, once its uh, production is finalized, it'll be a very good one. My name's Gary Warnchak and I've done just about everything in the wrestling business you can except wrestle. I've been a promoter, I've been a photographer, I've been a writer, I've been the ring announcer, I've done all kinds of stuff. I'm proud to be a part of Detroit wrestling history for the past 50 years. If you want to uh, see what the history of Detroit wrestling's been like, you got to see this. Wrestling fans, there's a new video out I think you should get. The history of pro wrestling in Detroit. It's insightful, it's informative, and it's entertaining. I highly recommend that you buy this if you have any interest in Detroit wrestling at all. I know many of you do. It was one of the greatest promotions, one of the greatest territories of all time, and plus you get to see me on that tape. My name's Handsome Vinny Scarboni, and I'm your Midwest Heavyweight Champion. And I'm here to represent the present and the future of wrestling right here in Detroit. 
Tune in, you don't want to miss the history of wrestling in Detroit for the last 50 years. Featuring the next 50 years, Hanson Vinny Scarboni. Check it out. Hello wrestling fans, I'm A.T. Huck. A.T. Refn Huck. I've been in professional wrestling now for almost 23 years here in the state of Michigan. This wrestling tape, the history of wrestling in the Motor City in Detroit over the last 50 years is gonna be a great, great DVD. You wanna get this. It'll cover wrestling from Kobo Arena up until now. And I've been a part ever since 1967 as a fan, up through the 90s to now in professional wrestling. You wanna see this DVD. Wrestling fans, if you're a Detroit wrestling fan, this is coming soon. A new documentary by the award-winning producer Mark Novotarski, his new project, The History of Professional Wrestling in Detroit. If you want to relive the famous old arenas like the Chesterfield Arena from the 50s and 60s, the Olympia Stadium, Kobo Arena, the promoters, Burt Ruby, Johnny Doyle, Jim Barnett, Francis Fleischer. If you want to relive the greatest wrestlers of all time, Leaping Larry Shane, The Sheik, Bobo Brazil, Dick the Bruiser, the promotions that happened around Detroit, Big Time Wrestling, Motor City Wrestling, Michigan Championship Wrestling. It's all going to be told by the historians, the hardcore fans, the wrestlers, managers, and the promoters themselves. It's all coming here really soon. Watch it because this is gonna be big. The history of professional wrestling in Detroit, it's gonna be the ride of your wrestling life. Hello, uh, my name is Thomas J. Rudy, also known as the Grown Ass Man, also also known as the Professional Mark. And right now, we are filming scenes for the next series on Detroit wrestling. The first one was on the sheet, this is Beyond Detroit, the history of Detroit wrestling, and also a little bit about Michigan wrestling. So I highly recommend when this comes up, you buy it. Don't make a copy, buy it. Because if you make a copy illegally, I'll come over there, I'll break your DVD, and I'll scare your children. With this face, I could definitely scare your children. This is Big Jim Lancaster. I'm blessed and honored to be part of this project that brings the history of pro wrestling in Detroit to the viewers. You will see and hear from various people that over the years have seen things and been part of things that are so unique and so historic and if in front of so many people that you will be proud that this project is going to tell the story of how things occurred here in Detroit. As the Sheik, Dick the Bruiser, Bobo Brazil, even back to the Alex Karras days when he was part of some matches in Detroit. You'll hear some good stories, some maybe some heartbreaking stories. 50 years of pro wrestling. And of course, you had to invite Rude Boy. I gotta tell you something. You gots to get this video. You gots to get this DVD. Why? Because I'm on it. Of course. But if you want to know the knowledge of professional wrestling, you will learn something right here. Pop the disc in, sit back, get you some popcorn, and enjoy 50 years of professional wrestling. Detroit style. I'm Chris Carter. And I'm a professional wrestler, and I'm here to tell you about the documentary of the last 50 years of wrestling in the Detroit and surrounding areas. I want you to watch it. I want you to go out and buy it. I want you to get into it and enjoy it. 50 years of professional wrestling in Detroit. The Sheik, Dick the Bruiser, Bulldog Don Kent, Al Costello, Dave Drayson, anybody you can think of. Get your people together, all your peeps, your family, your friends, sit down, enjoy it, go out and buy it, keep it forever. You know, folks, you thought in the past that you knew all about Detroit and the territory of Toronto, you know. You thought you knew everything about it. But today, 
You've had the pleasure of listening to Ox Baker, and I can tell you, after the day, no longer will you say, I don't know all about Detroit, because Ox Baker has informed me today. And in memory of the great Sheik, who we all loved, he made Detroit, he was Detroit, and he used Ox Baker for a few minutes, and all he found out about Ox Baker was, I love to hurt people, and when I come back to Detroit, I'm going to hurt somebody. The Sheik was a maniac. I mean, he would, as you come out of the match, he would just get close enough to you to stab you. I mean, it was almost like an assault case, and you kind of go, wow, that's not even a wrestling match. This guy's just like assaulting this guy with a big pen or whatever. There was never any real wrestling moves, because, but it, it, because if he did, then it would almost become like a sport, but... You know, wrestling, the original Sheik, was more like a survival test. You know, at the end of the day, you really believe that Ed Farhat was dangerous. I mean, there was no doubt in my mind that guy was dangerous. <laughs> he was a dangerous maniac. And Abdullah was the same way. I mean, I, I had very little doubt that that guy was one scary, dangerous man. Yeah, well, Lassie was sort of a, 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 he was, he was a perennial, you know, mainstream wrestler, uh, as both as a heel and a uh, good guy in the L.A. area. Uh, I mean, I started seeing him wrestle back in 1964, that's when I first started going to the matches, and he would come and go. He was usually a, a heel, but he did become a very popular wrestler later on towards the end of his career in L.A. in the, uh, in the late 60s, I think he turned. But he had some amazing matches with Sheik. In fact, I believe that a couple of matches with the Sheik turned him into a good guy from a bad guy, and uh, there were some of the most memorable matches I've seen. He had, uh, they've had cage matches, they've had a match in which uh, uh, the uh, weasel, uh, Abdul Farak, was tied up in a little uh, cage which was hoisted above the ring so he couldn't interfere in the match. Uh, I mean, they had every type of match imaginable. And, uh, amazing matches. They had some great matches. And I believe most of them were uh, either double disqualification or somebody got disqualified. I don't, th I don't think there ever was a clear-cut uh, winner between those two. I gotta tell you, there's wrestling all over the world. Everybody loves wrestling, but there's no wrestling like Detroit wrestling. Those people, those people know their wrestling, and that's true. Like Akila Kowalski, you know, in a different age, in a different time, 500 years ago, he would have been a king. He would have been a king. These guys have wined and dined with kings. These guys have wrestled in front of oil sheiks. These guys have wrestled in front of royalty. They've traveled every corner of the globe. They're a lot more interesting and diverse and eclectic than most nine to fivers. True, you have the women chasing, you know, drinking, drug abusing, you know, macho, you know, jerks, but you also have some very, very interesting people who are larger than life and having worked in both worlds, film, and wrestling, I would say for the most part, the wrestlers are far more uh, charismatic and larger than life than the actors. When Truth Martini says something, people listen. So listen closely. The Detroit wrestling scene by far is the greatest wrestling scene in all of professional wrestling, past, present, and future. And speaking of future, I'm still gonna be there, and that, my friends, is the truth. <laughs>
it means a lot to the guys when they see people turn out to support a product or an individual wrestler. So. Hi, this is old Irish Mickey Doyle, pro wrestler extraordinaire, and I am part of the pro wrestling history of Michigan, Detroit, and the world. One time, the Sheik said to my he didn't he didn't really care for dogs, but um, uh, he said to my dog he said to me, does my dog get, have trouble getting shit on his fur? I, I said I don't think so, and he goes, well, let me take it to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the kick the bucket match with like, Chris Carter against Mickey Doyle and the, uh, the and the weapon and was Doyle a hated bucket. Me. Everybody hated me. Of course, me. they all hated you. <laughs> they had a bucket in the ring, and the bucket was the weapon they could use. And who was holding onto the bucket? Mr. Deluxe Cab. Oh yeah, that's right. We had a sponsor. <laughs> anyway, this has been great, guys. Yep. It's, been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. See you again. You too can be a part of professional wrestling history. Go to insent.net and see how. That's insent.net.